Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 183 of Snackman. This week, we actually have a, a new guest, which I'm really excited about because he used to be on my team and now he's on your team and he's talking about uh, building AI agents, which is something that, you know, you guys are going to hear a lot about. But It's a new uh, hot topic. We've never heard of it before. You're a hot topic. <laughs> I am a hot topic. <laughs> our gentleman's name's Alex. Uh, Alex, so if you wouldn't mind introducing uh, your or yourself to our snackers, let them know what you do, and then we'll jump right into it. Sure, Matt, Kareem. Great to be here. Um, I'm Alexander Stevenson. You can call me Alex as well. I'm a technical advocate at Learn with Cisco. Matt knows me and Kareem as well previously from DevNet. Um, fresh back from Cisco Live. I got to meet David Bumble and Network Chuck, and now here with Matt and Kareem. It's like a dream come true. So I'm very honored to be here and support the community. Or a nightmare. Depends on how you spin it. <laughs> we'll have to build up Alex to be on, on the same level as David and, and Network Chuck. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the first the first building block of that. Yeah. So you're here to talk to us about um, AI agents, specifically with Mistral. Um, so can you kind of give us a framework for either like the use case you were looking into or kind of how you got started in it and then maybe give us a little bit of a demo of what we're looking at here? Sure thing. Um, so the use case for this is really for the edge or constrained environments where you want to either use an AI API or AI agent, both of which Mistral offers, and just make one request and get one response back um, letting you know the state of your network and giving you some recommendations. Oh, cool. It's also a learning tool, I think. So it's the natural developer progression, um, you know, from net DevOps and it's very dev to work with the API. And now we get to do that with the agent as well. So while some people like to use agents in a slick GUI and that's fine, click and drag. I think many people and our community appreciate being able to work with it in, as an API as well and look at the code and see what's going on and play with it. And this gives us a more holistic understanding of how the agents actually work. And it's a lot of fun too. So for for the snackers that don't know what Mistral is, can you just give us an idea of what it is? Is it is it the tool or is it, what is it exactly? Yeah, sure. Uh, Mistral is a company based in Paris, France. It's a strategic AI partner with Cisco. And while they are not integrated into any products yet, or, and I'm not saying that they will be, uh, <laughs> they most likely would be offering generative AI and things like uh, network optimization, log analysis, and troubleshooting. And previously this year, they released an agent along with Cisco called the AI Renewals Agent for customer experience. And they have more AI agents in the pipeline. And I'm interested to see how things are going to develop because they're very well positioned in Europe. Um, they have the more stringent, stringent data guidelines there to continue to guide Cisco in an ethical AI direction. So it's very important to uh, understand this company and their place in Cisco's future and ecosystem. But they manage their own models as well, correct? Their, their own LLMs? Yes, they have many frontier models and... Um, state-of-the-art models, edge models, and you can offer, uh, they also offer custom solutions so you can work with them. I reached out to them. They were very accommodating. Cool. Their infrastructure is immense and their edge right now is in their the awesome power of their frontier models. And that's what I'll be highlighting today. Many people um, will see the advantage of running models locally, right? You get to control all your data. So in this case, we're gonna actually be sending the output from Cisco devices to Mistral. And although they do abide by the more stringent EU data guidelines, if it's not personal information, they're still going to be holding on to that. So you always always want to be cognizant of what you're sending out there. So we're just sending some simple device info some from commands that everyone knows so that it won't be too detailed. So we're not worried about it in this case. Responsible AI is a thing, fellas. All right. <laughs> um, Alex, show us what you got. I'm, I'm really curious what... Uh, what you've done with all of this. All right, so on the left here is just a model of what I'm sending data from and to, okay? I'm collecting data from DevNet Sandbox, running NXOS, as well as Cisco Modeling Labs, and sending that via an AI API and an AI agent to Mistral for redundancy in case one of those two pipelines is down. All right, so 
I'm going to go ahead and run the code now to connect to those two and see what the results say back. So I'm just going to run that here in my Python environment. But in the meantime, I want to pull up the results of when I ran this just a few moments ago. So it connected to both the devices. You can see at the top here, it gave us a summary of device one, device two, and then a combined analysis of how they interact together. So this can give us a, a more detailed and excellent view of how our entire network is working. We have a priority action plan here that it provides. And here I can go ahead and ask it things. So I'm um, how to implement role-based access control for these devices. So that'll take some time, reach out to Mr. O and get the response back. So let's look at what's going on. Okay, so I did this on purpose. I broke it, right? I put the wrong password in for my CML running here locally. So I can see right now that it's having trouble or it cannot connect to that. That's very important in this instance because in this repo on Cisco Code Exchange called Mistral for Cisco, I've not only included the AI API and AI agent building pipelines, but also integrated WebEx. So because I'm not able to connect here, a special WebEx message will be sent to me personally and the entire team will get a message saying that we ran an analysis. So let's see here. All right, still talking to Mistral. That's fine. Probably because I'm running two concurrently. I love the fact that you have redundancy in the demo. <laughs> so we already see we got a response back. We have a continuous conversation with this agent. And these are two different agent system prompts I've used, right? So for the for the AI API, I used a very high level unicorn DevOps super engineer. So we get a very high level response, an overview of the network. But for the AI agent, I told it to be a troubleshooting expert. So here we get copy and paste commands that we can paste right into our devices and implement role-based access control. And these conversations keep going and going and you can, have all kinds of fun with this and play with this. And it's just a great learning tool. I'm very excited about this. Does it actually apply those configuration changes to your network? No, that's a great question, Kareem. And that was the first question I got back <laughs> after the session at Cisco Live was, can, I, can the agent reach out and do these things for me? And the answer is no. And that's something that may be available in the future. I'm not sure, but this is just, the first steps and getting there and making sure that we grok what's going on completely before getting to that stage. Yeah. And I, I actually, Alex, I think you call out something very um, specific here. You said, play around, get comfortable, um, analyze what is coming back as suggestions. Um, there are ways that we could add in another layer of agent that actually takes those activities for us by us just saying, hey, yeah, make the changes or update the password. Um, and I, I was actually speaking with some of our SREs on the DevNet side about how they've been leveraging the tools um, for any configuration management on our side. And um, they, they said they kind of almost went too far at the beginning where they were having it update repos within Git. And I was like, oh, but you changed that really quickly. And they said, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, because there has to be and that's, I think, kind of a good message as we play with these tools and trying to figure that out is um, there is still a, a human in the loop. And, it, and it's got to be a human in a loop with the understanding of what is happening. So there is a knowledge base that's going in there. Um, what I what I'm starting to see, especially in these IT operations tasks, is we're stripping away the tedious activities and we're turning these into um, more problem solving engagements. Um, so there is some underlying building that has to occur, of course, to get to what you're showing us here, Alex. But, um, you know, for those people that are, are clamoring, at least within the IT operations concern that AI is going to take our jobs, yeah, it's not there yet. <laughs> um, I mean, we still need, I mean, we're talking about changing infrastructure at its fundamental level. And um, for all of, uh, you know, all of us that have worked in networking and IT operations for decades, we know that we can't just do this stuff willy nilly. So um, I, I think that's a good lesson to come out of it. These tools can make our jobs faster, uh, more productive for sure. Uh, but I don't think we're 
at a comfort point yet where we're we're like gonna let it just do its own thing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this, Matt and Alex. What if what if we we can still take this a little bit further? I, I agree. Sure. What if we actually have an agent that basically pumping all the data, the configuration, the telemetry from our production environment to CML. So we have a digital twin of our network mm -hmm. and then all the configuration changes and everything that is automatically made by another agent is implemented on that digital twin of our network. That is possible today because we're not we're actually seeing what's happening use leveraging tools like CML to basically have the agents have full autonomy on the network. And mm -hmm. as humans, we can just monitor that and see that they execute the right thing, that the configuration apply, break anything, and then give it the go to touch our production. Yeah, I think I, the use yeah. cases will be fun to work on and build. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, uh, definitely, and I don't disagree with you, um, because we talk, I mean, we've always talked about putting things like CML within the, the CICD pipelines of infrastructure as code. Yeah. Um, and this is then taking that, that testing phase off of our shoulders. But the end result is ultimately we have to make sure that that check is all in place before we push these things to production, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alex, uh, real quick before we let you go, um, because we're, we're about running out of time. Was there anything else you wanted to show us before we get to the end here? I just want to say I like what y'all have said using CML. And and that's, uh, that's you know, the first step on the full brain emulation. You guys are going very far there with your forward thinking. But I also want to say that we can also, as network engineers, sort of step back. And the code that I've shared here, this project, we can use things like SNMP traps webhooks, syslog, and things like this to set off this script. And maybe, like you said, Matt, be safe and just um, push the results to an observability platform like Splunk or AppDynamics. But also think forward like y'all were discussing for those advanced solutions. There's one last thing I want to add is that, yes, this code also will keep humans in the loop. That was another important thing you said be, by... Um, by alerting us via WebEx to make sure that we are aware and monitoring everything that AI is doing. Yeah, great. Um, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we let you go, since you are a first timer, um, we haven't had a first timer in a while, Kareem. I know, I'm surprised uh, he's a first timer too. Yeah, so we asked this of all our first timers, um, what superpower would you choose to have and why? I would want to be able to understand people without having to have a conversation with them. Not that I don't like having conversations with people. <laughs> I do enjoy it. But to be able to get all that knowledge just instantaneously and understand people's backgrounds, where they're coming from, and that way we could converse from there more easily. That would be something that I'd be interested in. Selective empathetic telepathy. <laughs> That's uh, we should coin that one. <laughs> There's a new comic book coming out on selective empathetic telepathy. <laughs> you should also trademark that term, Matt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for your time. Uh, snackers, go check out all of uh, what's available for us uh, between Cisco and Mistral. Um, that partnership is, uh, as Alex mentioned, very strategic and valuable for us. So um, thank you so much for your time. And we'll see you guys next um, on the next one. Alex, good to have you on. Thank you, Snackers. Appreciate it.